How's it going everyone? Mask here, back with another Black Desert mobile video. Now today we're looking at min-maxing our workers in our camp, and basically an in-depth guide to the node. The no There's enough about the node in camp that uh, it, it kind of deserved its own video, because you can really go into depth about it. And, so, and to make it, to round it off, we're basically going to talk how to min-max workers um w the different types of workers which ones you should use there's different stat layouts and different rarities so min maxing and in-depth guide to the node so now the the workers themselves let's take a closer look at them and to do that we're going to go to the pub this is where you hire workers now the currency you use to hire workers is called contribution and you level your contribution up by doing quests, all the quests all over the game, your story quests, making alt characters and completing the story on them gets you more contribution. And it's a great way to get a lot of a lot of uh, extra materials, stones, uh, silver, uh, basically stuff that you need to advance your character with. A lot of people roll constantly new alt, completing repeatable quests throughout the game. Whenever you uh, as you're progressing, there's usually harder and harder repeatable quests along with you and that's going to increase your contribution level and ultimately give you more contribution to hire better workers so you can see this purple worker here costs eight contribution the green one is three and this white worker is two now one of the one thing i really su suggest to everybody when i'm talking about camp and this is what i've done and that's why the, the, that's why it looks like this is i only hire two types of workers white workers and yellow workers. Yellow workers because they're your end game workers. So you might as well get them as soon as you can. Start investing into their levels. And their stats are way, way better. Now, I've heard rumor that apparently you can like this you can upgrade the workers over time. This is level 10. I can promote it. It becomes a green worker and it can go to 20. Well, the thing with that is. Uh, now, I, I haven't actually read it or fact-checked. Originally, my thoughts were that the, the final result was actually not as good. When you, If you did it this way and you got to yellow and you compared it to a natural yellow, that it was not as good. But I, I was told that there's a post on Reddit that really, really proves that it is the exact same. So it doesn't matter. But here's the thing. I've been playing for... A month and a half now or whatever if yeah it feels like almost a month and a half and i don't i only have one yellow worker at level 40. so it would take you until you get that purple worker to level 40 before you could promote it to become yellow and you're living with extremely subpar stats that entire time this worker here is 200 270 and 318 stat wise and if we look at this purple 50s to 80s if you look at a white worker 30s right across the board this level 30 yellow it has has 300 strength that's incredible and you wouldn't even be able to promote your worker to yellow until it hit level 40 and that is so far down the road this is how i suggest every single one of you to lay out and build your workers which are the base of of your entire camp only hire whites fill your entire entire 16 out of 16 with white common workers and then what you do is when you have enough contribution it costs 10 extra contribution to hire a yellow and uh because you it, they cost 12 but you're gonna fire a white worker to hire that yellow worker so you're gonna come here and refresh it costs seven for this refresh nine nine now i'm and here we go yellow balmushir 12 now unfortunately i don't have a slot so i can't actually hire this yellow hi i'm flabber welcome back to the masquerade buddy thank you so much tier one sub for 30 months that is an og right there all right back to the focus uh let's bring that chat box back up too we we we're uh handcuffing our friends on twitch we're currently live streaming while recording this i love live streaming and recording this let's test make sure the chat's working it is fantastic so now there's a now to break down the individual stats this is what i would do re-roll with some stamina don't be scared your stamina constantly regenerates now there are six different types of workers and every single it's every single t uh whether it's common blue purple yellow 
there's only six different types of workers and I don't really, I should have a nice chart made for this, but the easiest way to describe it and I'll, and I'll, and I'll show you by properly naming all these, these workers on this list here to get started. So essentially the val these stat values are always highest, medium, lowest, no matter what, it's the same layout. So this is a VSD vitality is the highest strength second and D is, is the lowest. Now, these three stats affect different parts of the game. I think there's a question mark here that should give me a little bit of a readout on it, but it doesn't matter because I've, I've gotten most of it down. All the important stuff I've got memorized anyhow. So vitality is the stat that lowers the amount of time it takes your worker to go out and gather your resources and come back. That is the most important stat on a gathering. I call them a gathering worker because there's different, there's different uses for these workers. So I would call this gather VSD and that's how I name it. And it's like a taxonomy system where I name my workers by their use, by their stats. Let's go to the next yellow worker. This is a, a, a strength, dexterity, vitality. Now, having vitality at the lowest, this worker is not very good at gathering. So it's not a gatherer, but these stats come in really useful in something called the node, which I'll get to after we're done talking about it. So this is going to be a node SDV. Strength in the node increases your node manager experience and dexterity increases the chance at doubling the rewards you're getting from the node. But don't get confused by that. We will absolutely get, get there. Now, as you can see, I only... I've, I've hired these yellows and, uh, and I would hire this guy. This guy is a DSV, which is great for the node as well. Lowest vitality. So this isn't a, isn't a character you'd use uh, to gather essentially. Now the six possibilities really is, is just the six, it's your six combinations you, you get with three things. VSD, VD, VDS, SDV, SVD. DSV, DVS. Those are your six combos. It's plain. It's really plain and simple. And right away, I will simply say that any of the two combos that have vitality as the second stat, I consider subpar and not actually optimal or usable because you either want vitality as the main stat, the first stat, because then it's a, it's, it's your best, most optimal gathering worker or you want it as the the weakest stat because then it's it's the two these two stats strength and dexterity are optimal for nodes vitality is near useless in the node so then it becomes a perfect node worker because vitality is the lowest when it's vitality in the middle it's a subpar node worker and a subpar gatherer i don't have a single one of those in my entire 25 workers that i that i currently have at my camp so uh that being said this is uh, this is uh, Maria's witch. I'm using it to give you a little example on. So I have a I have a camp that's not fully maxed, so I can kind of show you that mid-game transition stage still. So you have your six different work worker possibilities. You're gonna get more contribution by completing quests. Come in here, hire this worker that we just rolled with our stamina to get. Fire a common worker, and boom, you're you're progressing your camp. That, that's a, the, absolutely the way that I suggest it. Now, let's go into the node as we've introduced ourselves for that. So the, it, it's the trading post, which you'll get after Town Hall 4 or 3. Progress in the main quest, progress in the game, and then you're going to just, you just unlock all these buildings. We go into build, defeat Yuraka. It's a boss. Once you defeat that boss, you get the die workshop. Town Hall Tier 5, we're going to unlock lodging, another garden. Uh, it looks like we actually have everything else, which is fine. Um, it, you just you jump from 16 workers to like 25 workers the second you hit town hall tier five well you have to hit tier five and then upgrade all of your lodgings plus build a new one but it's a massive jump so but let's jump into the trading post and let's talk about the node because this is actually a pretty intense part of the game damn 14 13 focused on the node just as hard as i did i love it now let's see we are in the node here. So basically what the node is, is you, you put, uh, it's a place where you can put your workers in here and they're going to complete passive tasks for you. Kind of like gathering, but you can get a bunch of different rewards like silver and different items that are going to help you out in the game. So right now we have, we're currently occupying five different nodes. 
So let's let's collect all the stuff. We so you have your silver for actually occupying a node with one worker. They'll passively generate silver up to twenty five thousand roughly silver. And then once you've occupied the node, you have the option of sending out workers to a to, to a task on the node specifically to acquire yourself items. Tablets get you ancient ruins runs. Uh, boss boss tickets are going to allow you to act to get into your boss rush fights and fight bosses for loot <clears throat> in the node when you have everybody laid out here you're going to get issues problems on the road that occur that you have to fix and they're actually really simple when you hit start it's just playing a mat or playing a like sequence match game purple red blue blue green and that's it you've cleared up that problem the problems slow down the production on any nodes that's past them. So these guys were red, they would have been getting slower production than normal, but now that that problem's cleared, it's good. And then of course, you can fully deplete these tasks in the node, and there's, so there's nothing else. So we've, we've gotten all eight tablets, so I'm gonna collect that and get them, and there we go. So there are drops, specialty nodes that appear, like this ancient tree stump. When you collect things in the node, and this is the real win the, the the rule the absolute peak of the node it are these specialty nodes that appear these seven good black stone stacks are really really good that's a that's a ton of loot for you to get so what you want to do when they appear is rearrange your current node layout to move things around and get there so you can start collecting this so what so what we have to do actually you can hit total here and retrieve all that's an easy way just to go boom collect everything And then I, you can withdraw all, and now all your workers, there's currently nine workers we have in here. By the way, I would always suggest trying to get your best nine workers in the node. Just because you want to progress, your, the, progress the node as much as you can. And the higher the workers, the higher the stats, the faster you're going to make progress in the node. So I'm going to see if I can make one swap really quick, worker-wise, before I actually lay, uh, I send them back out on their tasks in the node here. <clears throat> trading post node we're going to see i currently have one common worker but i've sent everyone out, else out gathering so it doesn't matter and and, and i have also I, it's already optimized so it is only the one common because i only have eight yellows and and the rest of my workers are are common so we're going back in that's how you select which workers you just click and unclick them on the left there Now, we're prioritizing getting to our specialty node. We could go one, two, three, and get there on four, or one, two, three, and get there on four. So you just look at which path has more items that you want to get. So tablets are great. Uh, this skill book here is just increase HP. That's kind of a, that's not not that great. No matter what, we're gonna hit this node. I still think the tablet's better, so I'm gonna go this way. Now, if I have all these, if I, when I have every single one of these people properly named, tracking their stats, then I'll know who I want to put where. So node SDV, this character has higher strength, medium dexterity, and lowest vitality. Strength is going to increase the node manager experience in the node here. And what that means is we're actually going to, so local fame is just completing tasks. That's a little, that's different, but the node manager level, right now we're 14 and 41%. Every time we level up that node manager level, we're going to we're gonna get more workers, more nodes, and more rewards in, in the node manager. And I'll show you the leveling breakdown. That's why I'm exiting here. Trading post node, we have, this is the level. So at level 15, we get a 10th worker. More workers more stuff getting done, more free stuff, more experience leveling up faster. At level 18, we get a sixth node. So the higher the strength your character has, the more experience you're going to get from the task that that character is performing. So what I'm going to do is those characters with the highest strength, I'm putting on 
occupying the node because that's going to put them right on the silver generation. You're guaranteed to generate silver every 30 minutes. So they'll be maximizing the experience you're getting from the silver. Now they have, they have lower dexterity. So your chance at doubling the reward you're going to get is lower, but it is just silver. And truthfully, it's not that much compared to every other source of silver in the game. It's kind of a joke. 25,000 is nothing. 500 every 30 minutes is absolutely nothing. So I focus the priority on actually maximizing the silver. Uh, yes, Flab, absolutely. So maximizing the experience here rather than the actual silver. So that's why this is an SDV worker. Now, moving on, I would fill all of these nodes just like this with SDV workers, but I, I don't know what the stat spread on a lot of these are because I haven't checked. So we're just going to, I'm just going to put them in for now. Normally I would take the time and name each worker properly. Gather VSD. If it starts with V, I name it gather. If it starts with S or D, I name it node. And if it's vitality as the middle stat, I don't even recruit it in the first place. Get it out of here. It's a subpar worker end of story, but we'll just fill these out. Not knowing the stats. I'm just going to just get them, get them in here. Now, at, whenever you get to your specialty node, these have really, really good rewards. Now, one way to tell who has the highest dexterity is to just look at the, the doubling percentage. 44, 9, 4, 37, 50. So this level 32 here, she is a dexterity first worker for sure. These, uh, this guy here looks like probably vitality first, dexterity third. These two have dexterity second. She's a lower level, higher dexterity. So that's the maximum chance to double the drops because these are fun this is a phenomenal loot to get from this node. So I'm going to send out my best dexterity worker. I have a 50% chance at doubling the drops I'm going to get from that specialty node, which is fantastic. We've occupied one, two, three, four nodes. I still have one more node I can occupy. So I look around and this is my favorite one here. I always... I usually prioritize boss rush tickets pretty high. VSD, we'll throw him there. At least strength second. Dexterity is the worst, so we don't really want that unit uh, trying to get items because the, du the, du the double, the extra gain rate, which is actually doubling. It's a chance at doubling the drop. So that's 32%. Or Yeah, so we're going to send these two to the boss rush tickets. That's a 32% chance to double that drop. And now we're going to, we just have to fill it out. We got two people left to send out. We kind of look for a task. So this is defense, but four, I don't like paying this one when it costs me 480 of this resource. Same here, 480. I like to do them when they're a little closer and they only cost food. So instead we're going to send, send one guy out on the tablets here and Probably just these <clears throat> poor black stones here, just to get them doing something. So I'm always thinking about how do I optimize my experience here in the node, and how do I optimize the actual drops and get the most out of it that I can. So here we are. I check my overview real quick. Everyone's working. Now the nodes glitch here. Whenever you're on a specialty node, in this menu, it never tells you you're 5 out of 5, but we are 5 out of 5. That is a little bit of a glitch. A uh, bug, I would say. Not a bug. It's like a like a GUI glitch. I haven't bothered reporting it yet because it's not that inconvenient. It says 5 out of 5 here still. And then when we go to leave, it's going to summarize up our gains, but we exit it. So it's not showing us any experience gain because we got that last time we exited. And yeah, that was managing the node. I do that every hour and a half, the two hours, and I get a lot of free a lot of lot of resources from the node i focus on it a, i focus on it so much i'm almost certain i am the highest level node manager in the game at the moment i would i high i obviously in global release but i would love to see someone higher i invite you to come and send me a screenshot but uh i'm i'm level i'm about to hit node level ma node manager level 18 actually Thanks a lot for checking this video out. I hope you've learned a lot about workers, uh, min-maxing the min them, t making the most out of them right away, and really taking advantage of those, those yellow stats that are available from levels 1 through 40. That's the big difference about getting a, nat a natural yellow right out of the gate. 
you're going to get a lot more stats for a lot longer. Like all of these, none of these are level 40 yet, which means if you were going the upgrade route, they'd still be stuck as purple and they would be giving you way, way less stats and you'd be getting way less resources, way less experience in the node itself and your gathering in your actual camp would be slower. So min-max your workers, like I've explained. It's really important to look at the stat distributions as well. Make sure you're doing that. There's four good stat distributions, two that I consider just bad, period. And you want a good balance between your, your SDV and your your SDV and your DSV for your node. It's I, I like to go almost 50-50. <clears throat> but that's gonna do it for today. Hopefully, you have a little bit more. Uh, you realize a little bit more just how important your camp is. It's like an empire of free stuff sitting there waiting for you to just teach it what to do and give it a little TLC. So don't neglect your camp. Don't neglect your node. Get in there. There's so much stuff waiting for you to, to just, just command little workers to get for you. It's fantastic. But... Thanks again for watching this. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Until next time, smash that subscribe button and stay classy.